The story begins with a documentary about the progress of apartment building in South Korea. According to a resource person, apartments were originally built to make it easier for people who wanted to buy a place to live. Many of the apartment dwellers were rich people or those whose economic level improved after living there. As time goes by, the trend of city life that spends more time working in the office makes apartments more attractive to people, and the price is getting higher. Until one afternoon in the city of Seoul, South Korea, there was a very, very powerful earthquake. Unknown what caused it and how widespread its impact was, but it devastated the super-crowded metropolis city. Buildings were destroyed, and apartment buildings fell and ruined. Fortunately, there was one apartment there, Wangong Apartment, that was still standing tall and only suffered minimal damage. Almost all the residents there survived from the earthquake, including Min Sung, a civil servant who lives in unit number 602 and lives with his wife, a nurse named Mianghua. Then shown the horrific conditions around Wang Gong's apartment, which has been destroyed. The earthquake was so severe that the water and electricity supply stopped. All the residents of Wang Gong apartment came down to the lobby and asked the security guard and apartment manager what their fate would be. Most importantly, they demanded to know when the government's aid would arrive. Because in addition to the many victims who had to be evacuated, over time the remaining foodstuffs would soon run out. On the other hand, even though Min Sung had received a ration of 22 bottles of aqua from the apartment manager, according to Myunghua, they could only survive for a week with the food left in the fridge. With the buildings destroyed, as well as the freezing cold weather, the survivors who were left homeless sought shelter in Huanggong's apartment. Some of the evacues came from the nearby Dream Palace luxury apartments. Like a boy and mother, Ju Mong and his mother, who begged to be allowed into Min Sung's apartment, Unit 602. At first Min Sung refused, but eventually they were both let in by Myung Hua. Unable to leave them outside, Myung Hua taught Ju Mong how to communicate using radio communication. The disaster has also damaged some social order, one of which is the barter system back in effect and use. Like Min Sung who bought fruit can and exchanged it for his watch that was no longer valuable. Then Min Sung returned to the apartment to eat the fruit can only with his wife. Which in the end Myung Hua also gave it to Ju Mong because she couldn't bear the boy. Until finally one afternoon there was a riot in one of the first four units. The owner of the unit was evicted and even stabbed by outsiders, who wanted to occupy the owner of apartment unit. As a nurse, Myung Hua, who happened to pass by with her husband, immediately helped the man who was bleeding from the stomach. However, it wasn't long before there was smoke billowing from inside the unit, and it turned out that there was a fire inside. Right after the explosion, a man named Kim Young Tak came with a fire extinguisher to put out the fire. Unfortunately, the fire extinguisher was too small and ran out. Yang Tak tried to switch on the fire extinguisher's water hose and also asked Min Sung to direct the hose to the fire. But the tap was frozen, it was so hard. After that, fortunately, the fire was put out. Then, the female chairwoman of Wang Gong's apartment board, Kyume, met Yang Tak to thank him for his heroic actions in preventing the fire from spreading to other units. Kyume also asked Yang Tak what unit he lived in. A man, another resident of the apartment, a middle-aged man who recognized Yang Tak's face, said that Yang Tak was from the ninth floor as they had shared the same elevator. Yang Tak confirms the other tenant's words and says that he lives in unit number 902 with his old and sickly mother. After the incident, Kyume invited the residents of Huang Gong to a closed meeting in her unit in order to prevent the incident from happening again. Which according to other residents, the fire was caused by outsiders of Huang Gong, who entered without permission into the crime scene unit earlier. Then the conflict began when the unit owner returned home and was surprised to see the outsider who had taken refuge in his unit. Based on the middle-aged man's story, as well as complaints from other residents, the food and drink supplies were running low. Almost everyone at the meeting agreed to evict the migrants. Because according to Kyumai, most of them came from Dream Palace, which is a more luxurious apartment than Huang Gong. 
Before this disaster, many Dream Palace people were arrogant and pretentious to the residents of the neighboring apartments. But some people would disagree, like Myung Hua, who prefers the settlers to stay in Huanggong until the rescue team arrives. Since the residents have different opinions, before making a decision on whether or not to evict the outsiders, Kyume asks Min Sung, who works as a civil servant, for his comments on what to do in this emergency situation. According to Min Sung, the most important thing is to set up the system and organization. That is, electing a group of councils that gather the votes of the apartment residents, as well as electing a leader. Hearing that, Kyume is convinced that the only leader who is best suited for the situation is someone who is unyielding, decisive, and willing to sacrifice his life. In the end, everyone immediately glanced at Young Tak. Young Tak was elected as the interim leader, and after that, a vote was held to decide whether the outsiders of Huang Gong should be expelled or remain there. The white pieces meant eviction, while the black ones meant the opposite. Then once all the residents of Huang Gong had voted, it turned out that the white pieces were far more than the black ones, which meant that the outsiders had to leave. Before going to bed, Min Sung remembers the wound on his hand. Then the story flashbacks to when the earthquake had just occurred. Min Sung and others were helping a woman who had been crushed by a pickup truck as the earthquake approached. Reluctantly, Min Sung left the woman and immediately took refuge in the car. Because there would be many refugees who did not want to be evicted, and there could even be clashes between the origin resident and the refugees, the council agreed to first spread the eviction information to the public and then evict them the next morning. In addition, the original residents must also prepare weapons in case of a clash and chaos. Hearing the plan, one of the council named Du Jen resigned. This is because of his less qualified physical condition. Meanwhile, outside the meeting, Yang Tak offers Min Sung to be the leader of the apartment security section. Because Min Sung is still young and has just undergone military service. The next day, Kyume shouts using a loudspeaker for all refugees to gather outside the apartment. In the announcement, she promises to give them a vacant place to live. When the refugees had gathered outside, the residence council came to the front door of the main lobby. Carrying weapons and iron fences, they intended to intimidate the refugees. Yang Tak also announced that all refugees were not allowed to live in Huanggong anymore and had to leave even including the security guard who has worked for 20 years in the building. Suddenly, the refugees immediately protested. This is because many residents of Huang Gong apartments are only tenants, not owners. In addition, the very cold weather outside will also kill them slowly. One of the refugees who used to be an official tried to negotiate. However, Yang Tak firmly told the person to leave, and finally Yang Tak was immediately pushed. The official's assistant also began to provoke and told all the refugees to push the blockade line of the residence and break back into the apartment. In the end, the riot between the two sides was unavoidable. The refugees who forced their way in were pushed back out of the building. Until finally, there was one refugee who dared to hit Yang Tak's head with an iron rod. But Yang Tak remained standing even though blood was pouring from his head. He grabbed the iron rod and shouted to all the refugees to get out of there. Seeing Yang Tak's assertive and fearless figure, all the residents of Huang Gong followed by throwing things from various floors. Then, with this action, all the refugees were very scared and finally left there. After all the refugees left, Yang Tak and Kyume organized a major apartment renewal. Starting from enforcing residents' regulations, cleaning up debris in the apartment neighborhood, installing high fences, maintenance, and making electricity. They also created many divisions that took care of certain things. There was a security section led by Min Sung, a health section, and even an army that distributed food and drinks according to the residents' work contribution. In addition, the council also told them how to dispose of waste, including how to poop by used plastic bags, and then dispose of them in a designated area. Since water was limited, the apartment was like a country in itself, because it was so organized, and even Kiyomi told people to keep trading by bartering to keep the economy keep running. They can't continue to rely on the apartment's remaining food and drink supplies. As a result, Yang Tak encouraged the men, including Min Sung, to explore outside the apartment in search and finding of foodstuffs, 
as well as useful items. They started traveling for the first time. They passed by the frozen bodies of the refugees. After that, there was an explosion somewhere that made the people of the apartment worried. But luckily, the exploration team was fine. Unfortunately, the food they found was mostly moldy. Day after day, they continued to explore from one place to another. At first, Yang Tak was still excited shouting yells, until he got bored and limped. Meanwhile, the amount of food they get every day is not proportional to the needs of the residents. So, it is clear that the supplies in Huang Gong are running low. In the middle of the exploration, Yang Tak and Min Sung had a conversation. It turned out that Yang Tak was married. But due to a conflict, Yang Tak had to live separately with his wife. On the other hand, Min Sung wants to have offspring. But unfortunately, Myung Hua miscarried a year ago. Meanwhile, at Wang Gung's apartment, Myung Hua was surprised to hear Ju Meng's voice calling her from one of the apartment floors. And after that, the two of them talks via radio communication. Apparently, a counselor who resigned, Du Gen, secretly hid some refugees from the outside. He did this because he did not agree with the decision of the board. In the next exploration, they finally could find a shop containing a full supply of food and drinks. Young Tak and his team would go inside, while Min Sung went to check the back of the shop. However, once inside, one of them was immediately shot at by a shotgun with the man who owned the place. Seeing that, Min Sung secretly approached the shop owner and wanted to attack him. Then Min Sung tried to hit him with an iron and could to make him fall down. Yang Tak even went so far as to kill the shop owner. Wang Gung's apartment troops tried to get a complete supply of groceries, but sadly, the shop owner's wife and child cried over his death and do not know how the two of them will live without their father. Rumors about Kwan Gung's apartment spread among the earthquake survivors. Many could not believe that there was an apartment still standing and that it had a decent social life like before the disaster. A more extreme rumor was that the survivors believed that Yang Tak and his team would kill anyone they met. Then those people will be used the victim body as food for the people of Huang Gong. Meanwhile, in Huang Gong itself, they were holding a very lavish New Year's festival because to the materials they looted in the place. The party was stopped because Kyume's son, Jae Hyuk, saw a woman from Huang Gong who came named Hai Wan. Investigated before the earthquake disaster came, there was a problem in her family that made Hai Wan and her mother move to another apartment. In addition, Hai Wan is Yang Tak's exact next door neighbor in ninth floor, but he doesn't remember her face. Then after Hai Wan was introduced in front of many people, they continued to party and Yang Tak performed karaoke. In the midst of the party, Yang Tak remembers his past. It turns out that his real identity is a taxi driver named CBM. On the day of the disaster, he went to Unit 902 in Huang Gong to collect his money from the real Yang Tak, the lawyer who had cheated CBM by taking all his savings. In front of Yang Tak's mother, the two of them struggle because Yang Tak refuses to return the money, even though CBM desperately needs it for his family, who are being chased by debt collectors. CBM, who was very angry and rampage, continued to attack Yang Tak, until finally the man, the real Yang Tak, died in front of his mother, who could only lying sick and weak. After that, CBM's daughter called followed by the voice of his wife, who was angry and confused, because debt collectors had come to collect debts at home. CBM can only cry, because he was also cheated and can't do anything about it. However, moments after the phone went closed, CBM was wide-eyed looking out the window because of the devastating earthquake that occurred. With Hai Wan present, who must have recognized Yang Tak's real face, she could have exposed his identity. On the other hand, this fake Yang Tak has tried to lead Wang Gung's apartment and create a decent life. During the food distribution, Myung Hua overheard a resident saying that the exploration team had killed people to get food supplies. Myung Hua confirms the truth to Min Sung and he explains with a convoluted answer. Myung Hua tells her husband to stop hunting. That's because she knows that Min Sung isn't one to easily hurt others, even to the point of killing. From there, Myung Hua went to Du Gen's unit to secretly give foodstuffs to refugees, including Ju Mong and her mother. However, Myung Hua was spotted by Yang Tak, 
who was smoking not far away. Shortly after, Haiwan passes in front of Yang Tak and enters his unit. But right after that, Yang Tak suddenly jumped in with the excuse of wanting to give a warming device to Haiwan. Obviously there, Yang Tak begins to subtly intimidate Haiwan, so that Haiwan is completely convinced and thinks the fake Yang Tak is her neighbor. While Haiwan is being examined by Myunghua, the mother's their bully Haiwan. Because according to them, she just walked into Wang Gung's apartment and didn't experience the ups and downs of the situation in the apartment until it was quite stable like now. The mothers continue to corner her until finally Hai Wan gets annoyed. She yells at them and leaves the room. Miang Hua immediately catches up and tries to calm her down. However, Hai Wan immediately poured out all her frustrations, starting from the mothers just now who bullied her, her struggle to survive to Wang Gong, to Yang Tak, who entered her apartment without permission, and Hai Wan was very sure Yang Tak was not her neighbor. Hearing this makes Myunghua surprised and intends to find out what Yang Tak is hiding. Not long after, the sound of people shouting downstairs was heard. It was because they found a resident who was killed by outsiders. In addition, a threatening note was found, telling Wang Gung's people to be more careful. Seeing the cries of the man's family, Yang Tak remembers his wife and daughter who was killed in the earthquake. Later that night, when Du Jin was busy eating with the refugees, Yang Tak suddenly came with other residents to search the unit. Then what happened, they found the refugees hiding. All the refugees, including Ju Mong and her mother, are forcibly evicted that night. They would soon die out there. Min Sung is shocked at the situation and know from Yang Tak that Myung Hua has been secretly feeding them. In the end, the husband and wife argued. Myung Hua briefly discusses her husband who's getting weirder like the other councils. Also about Yang Tak, who Hai Wan thinks is a fake Yang Tak. However, Min Sung ignores his wife's nonsense and asks Myung Hua to stay at unit until he returns, because Min Sung was afraid that Yang Tak and his team would kick them out. Even afterwards, Min Sung apologizes on his knees in front of Yang Tak to keep his family safe. The next day, as the head of Huang Gung's security division, in order to stay there with his wife, Min Sung leads a search of each unit to find other refugees who are hidden. Min Sung did not even hesitate to be rude. In addition, the residents were promised extra food if they provided information on the location of the refugees. In the end, many refugees were found and immediately evicted from Huang Gong. After the search was completed and all the refugees had been expelled, the residents who had smuggled the refugees were only punished by saying, we were wrong 200 times. However, among them was Du Gyun, who was preparing to jump from the front of his apartment unit because he was so depressed by the attitude of Yang Tak and other counselors who were very selfish and expelled outsiders just like that without thinking about the lives of fellow humans. Du Gyun eventually committed suicide and his body was cremated because according to the rumors of the residents, the bodies they had dumped had disappeared and were probably taken by refugees who became cannibals and ate them. After that, there was a small earthquake for a while and luckily a water source appeared nearby, which made Huang Gung's apartment even more suitable as a place to live. Meanwhile, Mian Hua asks Hai Wan about Yang Tak, who she says is not her real neighbor. Then Hai Wan explains that she once handed over the wrong package to her unit and remembers what Yang Tak's face looks like. Therefore, they are both convinced that the leader of Huang Gong, or the fake Yang Tak, must have a secret to cover up. With the arrival of Hai Wan at Huang Gong, as well as seeing Myung Hua, who seemed to be planning something with Hai Wan, Yang Tak began to fear that sooner or later the two of them would find out who he really was. Then at the same time, when Yang Tak and his team were digging through the ruins and trying to find a complete supply of basic necessities, Myung Hua and Hai Wan were desperate to break the wall of Hai Wan's unit in order to get into Yang Tak's unit. There they both found Yang Tak's mother. Unfortunately, she has problem to speak. However, Myung Hua sees a very suspicious fridge as the door is sealed with tape. And it turns out that all this time, Yang Tak's real corpse was kept inside the fridge with a wallet containing his ID card. Meanwhile, the exploration team was very happy as they were able to bring back a huge amount of staple foods that would last them for months.
On the way home, Min Sung also finds a hairpin, and he plans to give it to Myung Hwa. But suddenly, Ji Hyok, Kyume's son, is thrown a mallet of cocktail that immediately sets him on fire. Because it turns out there are many people who have been living in the ruins. As a result of the riot, many members of the exploration team were injured, especially Jai Hyok, who suffered two severe burns and finally died once he arrived at the apartment. His mother, Kyume, was hysterical upon seeing her dead son and immediately blamed Yang Tak. The unaccepting Yang Tak snapped at Kyume saying that she should thank her son for sacrificing so that the people in Huang Gung's apartment could eat properly. But right after that, Miang Hua comes and throws Yang Tak's original wallet and also reads out Huang Gung's rule number one, which is that only original residents can occupy Huang Gung's apartment. Soon after, a group of people came to carry the fridge containing the body of the real Yang Tak. Everyone immediately turned against the fake Yang Tak, and from here on, we'll just call him by his real identity, Sibium. Min Sun, who believes in him so much, asks for a clear answer as to why Sibium killed Yang Tak. Desperately, Sibium cries out hysterically that he's been willing to sacrifice himself for the people of Huang Gung's apartment, and also considers the residents there as his family. However, Sibium had killed the original residents and had taken Yang Tak's identity. On top of that, he has also evicted many refugees from outside which, ironically, CBM himself is not an original resident of Huang Gong. A riot ensued, and everyone immediately kicked CBM out. In the middle of the riot, CBM saw Hai Wan, who was watching him from afar. In his anger, because it was Hai Wan who revealed CBM's identity to everyone, CBM immediately got out of the crowd and ran to catch Hai Wan. Then what happened was CBM caught her and threw her from a height. Everyone was shocked to see CBM's madness, who threw Hai Wan into the trash. And of course, Hai Wan died immediately. After that, Min Sung came to point a shotgun at CBM. But unfortunately, the bullets ran out. CBM immediately grabbed his shotgun and loaded bullets from his pocket. But suddenly, there was a noise from outside the fence. It turned out to be people from outside trying to break into the apartment, so hungry were they, and both camps brutally kill each other. Meanwhile, Min Sung and Mian Hua managed to escape to a unit, until finally there are some people who could to enter and stab Min Sung. Meanwhile, in the apartment lobby, a rebel throws a bomb right into the middle of the riot. The bomb explosion injured many people, including Sibium, who was seriously injured, but he still braced himself to walk to his apartment unit in 902. Once there, CBM, who was already so weak, collapsed until he finally died. A photo of CBM and his wife's and daughter was shown. Shortly after, outsiders came to rob all the food in his unit. Fortunately, Min Sung and Myung Hua tried to escape from there and rest in the ruins of the church. Min Sung's condition is also getting weaker due to a stab wound in his stomach. Before going to bed, Min Sung apologized for all his mistakes. Then Min Sung also gave the hairpin he had previously found as a gift to his beloved wife. Sadly, the next morning, Min Sung was dead. Myung Hua was devastated and could only cry for her husband. Until finally, three people came to see her and invited Myung Hua to join them. Myung Hua finally goes to their place, which turns out to be a community center. Although there aren't too many people, they welcome people from outside to live there. It's a far cry from Huang Gong's apartment, where CBM orders to evict all refugees from outside. In the end, the rescue team did not come. The remnants of the survivors made their own associations. Some see each other as enemies, like the people in Huang Gong, who were eventually destroyed. But on the other hand, there are groups that invite outsiders to join, like the one Myung Hua is currently in. With this scene, the movie ended.